36x Pro and you want to do some of these normal distributions, um, I do recommend following, kind of looking through, maybe watching this video first and then watching the video on how to do it with a graphing calculator. Because I do talk about some situations with the graphing calculator, but I just want to show you where the functions are on this calculator so you can follow along more easily. It's going to be in the distributions menu, which you can see is in blue right there. So I'll press second and then that button. Um, distributions and normal CDF is right here. When we're entering normal CDF, we'll enter the mean and the standard deviation. So um, it actually calls it mean, which is mu. <clears throat> and in this case, I'll guess I'll just use 40 as my mean and a standard deviation. Uh, that's what sigma represents. Then I'll press enter and it brings me to the ne this next page and I do my lower bound and my upper bound. This would be my left bound and my right bound is what I'm calling it in that other, other video. So a negative 1e99, that's negative 10 to the 99th, that's essentially negative infinity. And positive 1e99, that's 10 to the 99th, that's essentially positive infinity. So if I wanted to find the, the probability of being, say, less than, I don't know, um, what was my mean? I think my mean was 40. So if, if I wanted to find the probability of being less than 38, I don't know, um, that means my lower bound is negative infinity and my upper bound is 38. I type that in there. And this gives me my value. I have a probability, oops, I shouldn't have pressed up apparently. Uh, my probability of being less than 38 is 0.387, whatever. Um, I can store this in a value. I can store it in X or Y if I wanted to use it again later on, especially if I'm gonna be using my complement rule, that's handy to do. So if I just select X and then say quit, then when I press X down here, that value has been stored in X, that 0.3875, whatever. Um, so if then I could use my complement rule, for instance, one minus X gives me 0.6124. It's a pretty handy thing to be able to do, so you don't have to write it down and then type it all back in. Um, so that's the normal CDF. Um, and the other thing you need to be able to do on here that is a little bit different from the, uh, the graphing calculator is the inverse normal. Um, it's the, I called it inverse norm, INV norm on the graphing calculator. So you go in here and you can see it's the, the same things as you would otherwise see. We have the area, that's the area to the left of our value. Um, and then you do your mean and your standard deviation. So if I wanted to say what is um, what has an area to the left of 0.5, well, I'm gonna expect this to be my mean because the mean has 50% of the area to the left. So I would expect a value of 40 out of this. And lo and behold, we got a value of 40. Again, we can store this in um, one of our variables if we'd like, or you can just quit. 